Hello there. So today I'm here to talk about this shirt. So I would refer to this shirt as a, a trade shirt. I'm not sure if there's a proper term for it. The thing that's interesting about this type of shirt is that it was one of the first elements of a truly global fashion. So shirts very similar to this, they originated in Europe in about I think the late 1400s. Very similar designs continued up until the 1800s. They were used by various people in the Euro sphere of influence. So basically everybody in Europe wore a shirt similar to this. And a lot of the people that Europe had contact with wore shirts very similar to this. So the trade shirt was an important element of um, mid-colonial um, First Nations fashion. Initially it started with the the sailors, they're coming over and they, oh, these guys have got furs. We want these furs because we can sell them for a fortune back in England. We want to rip these people off. What can we sell them? Okay, we'll sell them the shirts off of our backs. So you get these sailors selling their sailor shirts and indigenous people get, get it into their head that, okay, this is what European shirts look like. And then when they go to market, that's what they're looking for, kind of. In the early days, the shirts were mostly made out of linen. In the later days, once the Americans had their sort of slave cotton plantations up and running, the shirts became more and more commonly out of cotton. The shirts are quite light and um, billowy, which makes them very good in heat. They don't stick to you so much when you're sweaty. One of the consequences of this is that the sleeves are very poofy and they're sort of awkward. Because there's so much material on the sleeve, it sort of wants to fall down um, as you're moving, which can make it tight across your back. In order to solve this problem, people would wear them with a, a sleeve garter. So in this case, it's made out of some glass wampum beads. Um, <sighs> sleeve garters were also commonly made out of silver or copper. If you ever see an old picture of somebody and they got something on their sleeve like that, that's what it is. It's a sleeve garter designed to keep the baggy sleeves from getting in the way. So something interesting is that with the introduction of these trade shirts, um, Iroquoian fashion became much more conservative. In the days before trade shirts, it was very common for people to just go shirtless in summer because a leather shirt gets really sticky when it's 30 degrees out. With the introduction of the linen trade shirts, um, people started wearing shirts more frequently in summer, and so the culture towards that sort of thing became more conservative. Oh, somebody's going topless, okay, that must mean he's poor or whatever, something along those lines. So the next thing I want to show is how this shirt can sort of fits into different fashion trends. That The difference between different styles at the time isn't so much the shirt, because everybody was wearing them, Rather, it's all the accessories that go with it. So let me just demonstrate this. So all I've done here is tuck the shirt into my pants and taken off the sleeve garters. And you notice the style is completely different. So before it looks like, okay, that's a, looks like a native guy in the 1600s or whatever. Okay, now it's sort of a more Spanish costume, whatever, something along those lines. If I, for instance, take off the, the sash, now it looks very different again. Now it's more of like, I don't know, like a pirate costume or whatever. Truly global fashion. So thank you for listening. I hope you found this interesting.